right. Welcome back, folks. Hello. How you doing out there? It's your host, The Wolf of Crypto. Yes, that's right. You guessed it. You guys are tuned in to another episode of The Wolf of Crypto Podcast. And I got ourselves another guest here. We got Mr. Dan. That's checking in, dropping in with us. He's going to be talking to us about a game called Metalcore and how AI and blockchain technology is merging here together. Before we jump in into all that, I'm going to let Dan here introduce himself and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Dan. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me on. My name is Dan Nicolaitis. I'm the CTO of Studio 369. I've been making games as a primarily a programmer and later a tech lead for almost 20 years now. So got my start at Midway Games in Chicago, working on games like Mortal Kombat and uh, Stranglehold and uh, in the core technology group there. Helped on a lot of early Unreal Engine 3 titles and helped even develop Unreal Engine 4 as well. I've been in the kind of in the traditional Web 2 video game world for a long time, especially in the Unreal Engine ecosystem, and just now getting into Web 3 games with, with our premier title, Metalcore, which is in closed beta right now, and uh, you can check out at metalcore.gg. Nice, nice. And uh, before I jump into my own questions, since you are a bit of a gamer and with that background, one, well, we're going to start with Mortal Kombat. Since you did work on that game, I'm pretty sure... You got a favorite character. So who is your favorite character from Mortal Kombat? Yeah, I get a lot of flack for this. My favorite is Sub-Zero, and everybody's, <laughs> that's the lamest of the ninja ninjas, right? Yeah, I don't know why. I, don't, I always, always gravitate to, yeah, my, my favorite X-Man is is Cyclops too, so you can give me flack for that if you want. But uh, yeah, it's always that it's always To be that honest, way. man, Sub-Zero is not really like a bad character really to choose. To each his own, I feel like. I like his, his background and his story. I mean, we're going to yeah. kind of stick to Mortal Kombat a little bit. Were you a fan of the newest Mortal Kombat movie? Because I thought it was pretty, pretty legit. I'm hoping they maybe continue that on because I was a real big fan of the OG Mortal Kombat movie. Yeah. No, I like them both. I like them both. I'm a fan of the like the campy old school action movies. I'm I have no problem with the old school one either. But I, yeah, I did mm -hmm. like the new one too. But yeah, no, I don't know. I, I, I worked on Mortal Kombat quite a bit, but I would say that fighting games aren't even necessarily my like number one, my, my number one passion. Like I, I prefer shooter mm -hmm. games personally. And I worked on those a little bit more later in my career too, with like Gears of War and, and so on. But yeah, yeah, newest Mortal Kombat's pretty cool though. Okay. And you also had a chance to work on Gears of War. Shout out to my guy, Marcus Phoenix, yeah. big fan of that, of that whole series. And then you say you also had a chance to work on the Unreal Engine, which is pretty dope because Unreal Tournament, I was a pretty big a user of that back on what was it? I think it had, I think it was on that time around like the Xbox Unreal Tournament two or three. I was really huge on that. And then you said you've been working on the Unreal Engine. You have worked on it. Are you familiar with the game called Star Atlas? Because they're actually using oh, the yeah. Unreal Engine. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, they're huge, and they're doing a lot of. They put a lot of work into making more of an MMO engine. Working with what was it? I forgot the name of the kind of tech company that they're working with to to put like 10,000 players all in one server, which is crazy. But yeah, we're we're doing like an MMO ask or MMO light title with Metalcore. I guess Star Atlas is comparable in the sense that they're both sci-fi, but we are much more focused on kind of ground combat with mechs and battlefield style feel to it. So like a mix between the PVP sessions of a battlefield match and the PVE sessions of Helldivers 2, a little bit more more combat focused in that sense. Gotcha, gotcha. And actually, we'll go ahead and get into that. As far as, could you give us like an overview of Studio 369 and kind of some of the inspiration behind Metalcore? Yeah, we've been together around four and a half years, going on five years now. And we have been, so we worked together previously with the founders on various different titles going back like 10, 15 years and just came back together to work on a couple different things. Our CEO, Matt Candler, worked on MechWarrior 2 back in Activision, like back in like the late 90s. So he's like very steeped in, in the mech, you know, uh, he just loves mechs, right? He's, he's, he's deep into that stuff. And so when we came together as a studio, we worked on a bunch of different things. But one of the things that we worked on was a VR game called World of Mechs for, for the Quest. If you're interested, check it out. It's still, it's still fun to play. It's like a kind of Overwatch style 5v5, very team-based competitive PvP game. And we took that and mm -hmm. we had some kind of funding partners come in and they were like, what if we made this into a giant... We wanted to take that and we wanted to blow it out into, it, it's a very small VR focused game, but we wanted to be like, what if we made it into a huge PC game? And then at the same time, some, um, some people came with funding and they were like, what if we made that a, a crypto game? What if we made it a web three game? 
And so that's when we really first got our start. We had dabbled a little bit in helping out various different studios. Like we worked on like the, the Aku project with Michael Johnson and we worked on, we worked with the Ultra.io and we worked with, with Parallel for a little while. But our, this is the first time we got a chance to really dive into what would it take to make this from the ground up ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that was the genesis of Metalcore. And in, in late 2021, we started on the journey. We've been working on it for going on three years now. Awesome. Awesome. Now, is there any AI like functionality? Is there is it AI integrated into the game? And if so, could you kind of explain how that kind of works? Yeah. So we have, so there's, it's not like complete yet. It's still an inception phase, but there's two, there, there's one kind of key feature that we have with that AI almost like sits on both sides of. And that feature is what we call it our DGEN system. And I'll play on words with Web3 DGENs, but it, it stands for dynamic generation. So basically this system can like, as you're going through the world, can just populate the world dynamically with all kinds of different building blocks of missions. It can dynamically generate missions and create like all of this, all the stuff for you to do as you walk through the world. And right now we have some basic sets of rules about what types of missions it creates, but what we want to do is replace that kind of rule basis of what missions it makes with an mm -hmm. AI system that can basically do all of that and learn how to make better missions for players to keep them more engaged. And then on the other side of that, the missions themselves, in order to keep them fully dynamic, they could have any sort of combination of objectives, like the bad guys are different and they have names and they're dynamically generated. And a single mission could chain into multiple different ones based on what happens. If you fail a side quest that was like, save this guy, like the next mission might include like that guy's relatives coming to come in to get revenge on you or something, right? All of these different things. <laughs> and that's fully dynamic. None of that stuff is like actually written by us, right? There are some campaign missions that we've written in order to ease you into the story and whatever, but all mm -hmm. that's fully dynamic. So our idea yeah. is... On the one hand, we have AI to put the building blocks together to form fun missions and keep the player engaged. And on the other hand, we have AI, which takes whatever the final building block is and forms a story around it, right? It takes that and they're like, let's create like some story around it, put some voices to it and actually narrate this thing and make you feel like this is actually a part of the world as opposed to just check boxes on a, on a HUD, right? Those are the ways that we're exploring adding AI to, mm -hmm. to Metalcore. And I think it's going to turn out something really interesting. Okay. That sounds pretty interesting. And I'm assuming that would somewhat make your guys' game really unique is the fact that you guys have some type of pretty much like an AI engine that's going to pretty much learn and be able to recreate missions um, based off the player's choices that they make during these campaigns and missions and side missions and quests. Um, as far as how big the game is, I mean... Cause you kind of talk to us about functionality as far as like how many players can play. Cause I was doing a little kind of just browse on the website. It looks like it's pretty fun to play. I'm pretty sure you guys probably might have a play to earn type of information feature in there. Cause I know when it comes to web three games, I feel like that's the lead thing to get people drawn in. Cause a lot of yeah. things from web two is, oh, we're spending all our money on all these skins and stuff like that. But technically speaking, we don't really own it. So is, is it really a good yeah, investment? Yeah, yeah. I know that's the lead way on web three. So if you can touch on that for us. Yeah. So the game is, it's a pretty big game. We have a lot of, we have basically three main game modes. We have our okay. PVP session based mode, which is like battlefield sessions. And then we have our PVE raid mode, which is like hell diver dives, I guess you would say. And then we've got our PVX mode, which is a little bit more open-ended. You just jump into the world. You might fight some AI. You might fight some players. It's a little bit, a little bit more like Tarkov. It's not session-based. It's, you know, you just explore the world. You get these dynamic missions generated for you. All of these three things use our dynamic mission system. So for instance, the PVP mode, our dynamic mission system might kick in and be like, here's the three objectives, right? And, and it, it'll be different every time. So it's not just capture these three points every time. It's this time you got to capture point A while also saving the VIP while also doing the most damage to this, this obelisk in the middle of the map or whatever, or, or you might get any sort of weird combination of those things. And so each session will feel a little bit different. Um, at the same time, the PVE raids use the same idea, right? Where it's, it's all co-op based. So like you and five to 10 friends will all jump into one session and then it'll be like, let's just throw a bunch of different scenarios at you and have you do all these different experiences and Maybe there's like some that are more infiltration style, some that are all out of salt, some where you're just trying to escape, a bunch of different experiences and things you have to do. And so all of that is driven by the, these AI systems. 
in terms of the size of like how many players can play, like, the PvP sessions are going to be 40 to 50 players, so like 25 v 25, so relatively larger scale. And then the co-op sessions, something like 5 to 10, and the PvX sessions, anywhere between 20 to 30 players. We want to eventually get to a more just deathmatch style, like 100 players in a server where all they're doing is just like like just going at it. But uh, that, that's maybe a little bit further down the line. Okay. <laughs> And I was looking at some of the game features here. It looks like you guys have like different factions that you guys can choose from as far as building your own crafts. Let's talk about a little bit of that. It looks like you'll be able to craft your own weapons. I'm assuming you might be able to what, get some loot boxes, get some blueprints yeah. of like different weapons that you want to charge up. Is there going to be like, I'm assuming like rarities on guns? Because you did say it's in a closed beta right now. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah. Yeah, it's a closed okay. beta. That's right. Yeah, it's so we've got 150 different like vehicles in the game, and then we've got I don't even know like over 100 different like playable characters, and uh -huh. all of these are things that you could collect that you could find in the world that you could craft. You know, find the pieces of a mech, and then find the blueprint for it, and then craft it, and find all the ingredients, whatever, and then potentially convert it into an NFT, and then go sell it if you want or level it up. All of these individual items have their own loadout, right? So you might have mm -hmm. a Zephyr, which is a light mech. And you might kit it out to be like an anti-air mech, but then you might be like, but I also need a Zephyr that's like a scout. And so you might get a second Zephyr and then kit that one out to be a scout. And now you've got your two Zephyrs that you can choose which one you want to play with, depending on the situation and like what your team needs or whatever. And all of that, like leveling up through doing missions and quests with the unit and then the loadout items and stuff through the world. Yeah. Like you might want to find an upgraded pulse laser for your Zephyr and then equip that thing, or you might find a better cloaking device or whatever. And then all of those, like I said, 150 vehicles, hundreds of different loadout options for each of the slots and, st and so on and so forth. So there's a ton of stuff to find and do and upgrade and, and et cetera in the game. Yeah, because the reason why I was asking that, because a lot of games like Destiny, pretty much like games that you can build up your weapons. I know from hearing kind of some of the whispers in the crypto gaming space, I know a lot of people would say, oh, I wish... I could have that functionality in those games because a lot of people take a lot of time trying to find this special rare type of gun. And if you're one of those people that's constantly on the game and it's just finding and crafting all these different weapons, now you have the opportunity to create them as NFTs, excel them and get passive income in that sense. So that sounds like to me, that's going to be an option here in your guys' game. Would you be right on that part? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's the idea here is maybe you're really into, like I was saying, maybe you're really into artillery mechs for a while. So you're like really searching out for the artillery pieces, you're crafting all your artillery mechs. And then you get over that phase and you're like, I really want to be like a dogfighter now. So I really want to craft aircraft now. You, you, now you can take those artillery mechs that you spent months building up. You could sell them as NFTs and then you could take the what you earned as nfts and you could or for selling those and then you could try to use those to really build up your aircraft really quickly right so you don't you're not starting from ground zero and or like the stuff that you're not using anymore right some mm -hmm. you could find a home for it. somebody's going to want to use it at some point right somebody else who's like on a different journey than you and is wants different units wants different not everybody wants to play the sniper so if you find a good sniper, <laughs> exactly sniper, in a lot of other games you're just stuck with it in your inventory you can't do anything with it or maybe in, in, in something like team fortress or whatever you can sell it but you're, it's based on this marketplace system that that they have to support and we don't we're not even running the marketplace like you just do you can sell it wherever you want you can sell it on Magic Eden, right. you could sell it, you could directly transfer it to your friend, whatever you want, right? We can't stop you. That's the that's the magic of NFTs in our game. Awesome. Awesome. Now, because AI is a huge topic here, I'm starting to see it a lot more. Since you guys do already have it incorporated in your game, how do you see AI being meshed with the Web3 here in the next couple of years as we start to see a lot more Web3 games start to come on the surface. Because right now it's slowly but trickling. You start to see some games here and there. We're not at the rate of console gaming. So I just wanted to pick your brain on that. Yeah, AI is taking a huge, a huge part in all game development now, right? Unfortunately, a lot of concept artists are are being replaced by AI. And there's a lot of com conversations going around about the value of artists. We tend to still, we really value our artists. So we, you know, we are using AI to supplement our game dev practice. I there's really, there's multiple different ways to use AI. I should start with that. You can use AI to generate content for your game, or you can use AI in ways to, to unlock new features of gameplay that, that weren't really possible before. Using AI to generate content for your game is just cost saving, right? Like it's just cheaper. 
but in a lot of cases, it's like lower quality. And that's what a lot of people are worried about is that like the bigger companies are going to start to settle for all AI generated like icons for the UI and all the UI artists are going to go out be out of a job and stuff. And to a degree, I think that's a little bit lazy. There is a use for AI, for AI gener content generation that just un unlocks your artists to be mm -hmm. able to just do their job better, right? If you take the example of a cutscene, typically when you have a cutscene, you got a director who's got some idea, they write a script, you have to put together all the pieces to figure out like, how does it all work? And that takes a ton of work, like just to get to the point where you can even visualize it. Like you have to do pre-production, you have to storyboard it, you have to lay it out, you got to do camera blocking, you got to do all this stuff before you even get to the point where the director could be like, ah, eh, I don't like that, or I do like that, and we should keep going forward. And with AI, the nice thing is that you could get to that point where the director can really take a little bit more time to think about iterating on his idea or his or her idea or like at the start so that it's not like we put three weeks into this thing that they just wrote a script and they had an idea and then we put three weeks of work into it. And then at the end, we found out it wasn't that great. We, we wasted three weeks. Now we can, we can do all of that in a day or two. And then instead of wasting those three weeks, we can spend those three weeks on polishing the end product, right? Those same artists who are going to be doing the camera blocking and the whatever are going to be needed to make the final thing look really good and feel really good. But they didn't need to waste all of their time on like, is this even a good idea in the first place? That's a scenario where I think using AI is, is a great way to unblock your ability to iterate on your art. Because as we know in games, like your first time you try anything is never going to be the best thing that you do. Like you, you have right. to try three, four, five, maybe 10, 20, 30 times before you get it. And that's what AI really un unblocks for the people who aren't just using it to make cheap content. Like it unblocks the ability to iterate and do things more and more until you really nail the thing that's perfect. That's what I'm most excited about in terms of development. But then in terms of features, it's like now you can do all kinds of stuff like we're doing with this dynamic generation system that you couldn't do before. Or you could fake it before where it was all based on these rules that you could just put in a ton of quests and make it feel like it was dynamically generated. But in the end, it would be based on the set of rules and there'd be this finite number of things that could end up happening. But with AI, you could blow that out to, to be so much more, right? So that's another, that, those are the two different avenues that I think people are going to be using AI for is like iterating on new features, making AI actually an integral part of your gameplay experience mm -hmm. versus making an AI an integral part of your development process. And both of those, we're going to have to find the, the right balance of how to use it right. Awesome. Awesome. Now, as far as Melkor, as far as feedback that people that have been playing the beta, because I'm pretty sure, like I said, from the videos that I've seen on the website, it looks like it's a pretty fun game. Could you just share any like feedback from the players that have been playing? Have they been really having fun? Is there specific features that really caught their eye that they're like, you know what, this is something that I haven't seen in the game before. And I like the fact that you guys have it. Could you just touch on that a little bit here? Yeah, totally. Yeah, we've gotten nothing but positive feedback. This is a really fun game to play, and that's borne out with us playing it. Like, we will jump into the beta tests and just lose track of time and play with our fans and our community, and that's a really good sign. But you can tell when you're making a game when you have something special. You know, we have all the building blocks we need. It's just a matter of finding a way to really put them together in the final product, and that's what we're doing right now in our beta. It's just finding the right way to combine everything and pace it for the players and give them all of the perfect kind of ramp of complexity and getting them in depth in the crafting system and et cetera. It just takes time, right? So that's the main thing that we're spending all the time on is, is how do we really craft this perfect first 10, 20 hour experience and then make it feel like the, it just the world is your oyster. Like you can just play this forever. But the feedback we've gotten from players is like the combat in and of itself, the core gameplay is what mm -hmm. stands out, which which is the best feedback to get, right? Is like, right. clearly we're doing something. And then all we have to do is put this final bow on it and make sure that all the economy and everything work, which is a lot of work, right? That's what we're doing right now. But that's, to, to us, that's it's good when we can focus on that and not worry that the, the foundation is, is solid. Awesome. And as far as when the final work will actually be done, do you guys have a date on that yet? Or is it still something in the works? Yeah, we're shooting for open beta by the end of the year. Uh, we don't have an exact date. We are, our next beta is going to be uh, in September, and that's going to be one where we're actually upgrading our engine to UE5. So we were, we've been on UE4 this whole time, and we're just now upgrading to UE5. Um, okay. And with that, a bunch of additional features and stuff. So it's going to be a pretty big, big new build. 
yeah, and then like I said, we have our, our roadmap on our website with with all features that we're we're planning over through the rest of the year. Man, sounds like fun. Wish I could participate because this seems like a game here that I could see a lot of people start to stream. I feel like that's the next wave for Web three is start to actually start to see some of these streamers actually playing some of these Web three games. Obviously, right now you just got a lot of just simple console games stuff like that. But I think as you start to see especially a game like this, Melkor, because I've I seen like the robots. It reminded me of, what's it called? Have you ever played, uh, what was that? I think it was Titanfall. I know they yeah, had yeah. a robot kind of uh, fuse in there. And there's another game that kind of had some war machines and tanks. I can't think of the, the gaming name off the top of my head right now. But that was like my initial thoughts when I came across your guys' project. I was like, you know, it looks pretty cool. It looks fun and stuff like that. And then as far as like building up the weapons, classes, rarities, and I'm also seeing, it looks like you guys are going to do seasons as well in the game too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. We're doing yeah. like one, one season. We're basically doing one season a month now. So our, our season one is in September. It's still closed beta, but we're calling it season one. And that's also going to coincide with our reward system too. Like you mentioned before, it's a web three game. There is a reward system. We have a token that's out right now in addition to our NFTs. And that token is used as an in-game currency. So as you play the game, depending on where you land on the leaderboards or how many missions you finish or whatever, how many points you get essentially at the end of a season, you're going to get a reward in the form of the token. And then you're going to be able to use that token to hopefully purchase new mechs and do other cool stuff. Awesome. That, that good old play to earn concept, that good old play to earn concept. Uh, but folks, we actually ran out of time here. Uh, Dan has to go ahead and... Uh leave us but hopefully we can get back on the show hopefully uh once this beta drops we can actually start to participate and then obviously once the final product is done which will be used in the unreal engine 5 that's going to be cool to see because i'm pretty sure that's going to enhance the graphics and all that good stuff <clears throat> excuse me but before we let dan go dan is there like a last word you'd like to go ahead and give to the audience yeah, no, just check us out at metalcore.gg. You you can check out our game. You can play some of we have we got a web app that we just launched that's like a fun little card game you can play. We're launching a, a more like a mass market kind of idle game that's not a shooter as well. So there's a lot of different experiences out there if you're interested. And uh, yeah, happy to also share some some EGS download codes for you and your and your listeners if you guys want to jump into the closed beta. All right, you guys heard that. We go get some codes here, folks. We can go ahead and participate playing that good old beta. Get your get your machine and working and your avatars and all that good stuff. But I am your host, Wolf Crypto. I want to say again, thank you, Dan, for joining on the Wolf Crypto podcast. Talk a little bit about Metacore and how the game is awesome and how you guys are incorporating AI, especially with that conquest. That's something that's it's really cool. Other than that, folks, you guys have been listening to the Wolf Crypto Podcast. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure y'all subscribe and keep following the show. And until the next time, y'all take it easy. Be safe out there. Peace. Thanks.